All right, my friends, welcome back to the Reisinger build. Man, we've got a ton going on on the job site today. But on this episode specifically, we're gonna talk about roofing. Now this whole series, you know, has been sponsored by our friends at Builders First Source. But Atlas, a shingle manufacturer and also the manufacturer of the insulation we use on the outside and on the roof deck, is the specific sponsor on this episode. If you watched our previous episode, you watched how we did an over roof detail. We monopoly framed this house. We put two two inch layers of Atlas insulation on. We did a two by four on the flat running from the eave all the way up to the roof for a ventilation channel. And then we put another layer of zip system roof sheathing on so that we're where we are today. Now we did a full peel and stick underlayment previously. So the guys that started today are actually running right into the shingle process. Now we put our metal drip edge on the roof first, but man, the guys are making crazy progress. It's only like nine o'clock in the morning. And I feel like, geez, these guys are gonna be done by right after lunch or something. It's going really, really quick. But on this episode, we're gonna jump in all the details. What we need to know about the shingles, some details for durability. I'm gonna give you a couple design tips that I think really make a difference too. We're gonna to talk about the skylights that we used and how we're flashing those. A lot of really good information, whether you're building this specific house. By the way, the plans are available at bldrplans.com or building any house with a roof like this. We've got some great details for you. But that being said, today's specific episode sponsored by Atlas. Let's get going. A Build Original Series in partnership with Builders First Source. The Rising or Build. All right, y'all, let's jump right in. I've got a lot to talk about with shingles and specs. But before I do that, let's catch you up to speed on where we got to today. You know, if you look at the drone shot on this house, we've got a full peel and stick underlayment and they're starting to put the shingles down. But I wanna rewind time and just kind of review where we're at. So this house has an over roof detail and I'd highly recommend you go back and check out those full videos. But quickly, just real quick, here's how we got there. We monopoly framed the house, meaning my walls and my roof actually touch each other so I could tape that with a piece of zip tape. We are fully airtight and fully waterproof at the Monopoly framing. And then we added two inches of Atlas Poly ISO on top of the roof deck. So I'm around R22 on top of the roof deck. And then we added a two by four on the flat on top of that, that I screwed all the way down through with a really long Simpson screw into the trusses. So now when I put that final layer that they're actually walking on of zip system sheathing, this is really an over roof. And I'm gonna be vented between that zip system sheathing roof and the top of the insulation with that inch and a half airspace. So you're gonna notice later in the day when the guys start putting the vented ridge cap on from Atlas, that we're gonna cut out that peel and stick waterproof underlayment that we've got from the, uh, basically from the eave all the way to the ridge. They're gonna cut that out of the top and leave a two inch vent space. I've got vented hardy soffit. I'll have a vented Atlas cap on the top. And now I'll have lots of airflow, basically from the eave all the way to the ridge so that we a fully ventilated space. Now here's the reason though, that we did a full peel and stick. There's really two reasons. Number one, if we were to have a crazy wind event and these shingles blew off, uh, these are a highly rated shingle. I think they're up to 130 miles an hour. But if something were to happen, it's certainly possible to go higher than that in the scheme of things. Now I've got a full peel and stick underlayment under there so that I'm not gonna get really any water below that. This would be even more important if I didn't have an over roof detail. That over roof detail that I've got gives even more forgiveness for the house because at my first layer, at my monopoly framing, I'm fully taped under there. So any water that were to get through, it's gonna have a really hard time finding its way into the house. But for any house, that full peel and stick underlayment is a great way to go. That's gonna be part of the Fortified program if you're familiar with that. I've made lots of videos, but having a sealed roof deck makes a big difference. Now, a couple things I do wanna mention from a design side before we get into the specs. You'll notice this is a pretty low pitched roof right here. If I remember correctly, this is a 512 pitch roof. There's this kind of, uh, yin and yang that I'm going for, where I want some height of roof 
so that I've got some attic space for my mechanicals. Remember, I'm slab on grade here, so my, all of my HVAC systems are in the roof. I don't want too low of a pitch, so I'm tight in the attic, but I also don't want too high of a pitch to make it unsafe to walk on the roof, especially for future access. You know, if I or my homeowner ever need to get on that roof, I wanna make it not so scary. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So there's this sweet spot for me between like 512 and 712 that I really like. If I can make a house, you know, and I'm part of the design influence, five to seven over 12 is really what I, I like to see out there. So this one being right in there, we're right in the sweet spot. You can see the roofers are tied off, but in general, this is a very walkable roof. It doesn't feel scary to get up there. So uh, that's my, my preference. Anything above 712 feels kind of scary for me. All right, next up, let's talk uh, penetrations on the roof. I really tried to limit as much as possible anything coming through those shingles. Uh, I really feel like my shingles are good to go for many decades, but it's those penetrations that I do worry about. So, so the roofer slid a roof jack on the pipe that's sticking out that's gonna be my masthead for my electrical on the back of the house. And he also slid one on the back of the house. If you look at the drone, you'll see that I've got just one vent stack. But that's something that I really like to do whenever possible. I talk to the plumbers at the beginning of the job and say, hey, how could we collect all the venting into one bigger stack? I think this is a three or maybe a four inch roof stack on the back of the house, not in the front of the house. So when you look in the front, there's really no penetrations on the front of the house. Everything's on the back. Now, speaking of penetrations, the obvious one when you look at the drone shot, though, is these beautiful skylights. I actually have three skylights in this house. And I gotta tell you, over the years, I've kind of gone back and forth on skylights in terms of uh, they're a future leak potential, but they're also amazing for inside lights. I've kind of settled on the fact that, okay, we do need skylights. I like to put skylights in, but I really wanna do them in the least possible way when it comes to um, uh, worry for the future. So in this case, we did curb mounted skylights. Now that I say that, actually, I'm seeing my guys are pulling up with the skylights on this job. Let me actually uh, cut to showing you what we're using on this job. This is kind of cool. Mark and John from my team just showed up. Let me show you what we got on these boxes. We're putting in three skylights on this job two smaller skylights. These are Facro FXC is the actual model number. Uh, I really like curb mounted skylights. I'm a big fan of curb mounts because a curb mount means that we've raised the skylight up off the roof deck. Deck mounted skylights are usually lower and they kind of remind me of uh, you know a window, right? Where we've got like a flashing and nailing flange that gets mounted real low. A curb mount, on the other hand, means that we've added some two by fours and usually built up a curb that's around six inches tall. So like a triple uh, stack of two bys up over the roof deck. And then what's cool about these, a lot of manufacturers do this too, but uh, they've got a specific flashing kit that goes with it. So these smaller skylights uh, include this size, which is the smaller, and they're specifically made for that skylight I just showed you. So basically this skylight here has this flashing kit. It's actually kind of cool to show you what it includes. Uh, you know, you're gonna work from the bottom up, shingle style, just like we always do with the house, right? So we've got this bottom, we've got all these step flashings, and then we've got this head flashing. It's gonna direct that water away from the skylight. But one of the big advantages of curb mounts, besides the extra measure of waterproofing, which I really like, is also that they can be removed and replaced if necessary. You know, we do have massive hail here in the south. So if something happens a decade from now, we get some massive hail, something happens and these break and I wanna replace them, it's relatively easy for me to do. And frankly, I don't need to mess with that curb flashing kit when it's up above. It's gonna be screwed in from the sides, pop that skylight out and put a new one in. But the really fun uh, part of the skylight package is this right here. This big boy, I don't even remember the dimensions. I mean, that looks to me like it's four foot by six foot or maybe something like that. We specifically designed the truss package with BFS 
to accommodate this giant skylight. And actually, this is a custom unit. These are a little bit more off the catalog, off the shelf, so to speak. That's why you'll see all the labeling here has everything on it. This big boy doesn't have any labeling because that's a custom from Fakro. Another cool thing about Fakro, we didn't do it on this job, but they do make some triple glazed skylights as well. So consider that if you're in a climate where that really makes sense. We're on the side of the house that we're gonna get a little less sun. Uh, we're kind of north and east facing with this skylight, but super excited to see how much light this big boy brings into the center of the house. So let's get back to the roofing. All right, y'all, let me introduce you to Mundo from Kid Roofing. Mundo, I gotta tell a quick story for these guys. Uh, 20 years ago when I met you, I was just a kid, I just started the company, uh, and I made a three bid mistake on this project where the client during the recession said, Matt, you gotta get three bids and everything. And it was my first flat roof job. It had scuppers everywhere. I chose the lowest bidder. Turns out that was that roofer's first flat roof job too, which I didn't know at the time. He also didn't have insurance. He had given me a fake certificate and whited out the uh, the like dates on it. And that house leaked like a sieve. Basically every scupper on this stucco house leaked. And so Mundo and I were trying to figure out what the problem is. And I have this funny picture of you looking at this window. And I think in the background I'm saying, it's got a head flashing. I can't imagine the windows leaking. And right above your head is this scupper. And right after that picture, right after I snapped that photo, I think you're like, Matt, it's the scupper, I'm telling you. It's not the window. Your head flashing's fine. And sure enough, we ripped that stucco off and that scupper was leaking like a sieve. That was like a one-year-old house and the OSB was like mulch. You know, it was just rotted. From that point on, I've used nothing but kid roofing. These guys are amazing. And Mundo has been a, a true partner in my business uh, to me and lots of my custom builder friends. So thank you for your oh, thank uh, you. incredible career that you've had helping builders like me stay out of trouble. That's why I'm here. Let's give these guys some advice. Uh, you know, we've done all kinds of roofs. We've done clay, done a lot of metal. Uh, we haven't done a lot of asphalt shingles, but this job, you know, we wanted to do it on a budget, do it a little at lower cost. You know, I think of uh, this roof as probably being at least half, if not maybe a third of the cost of our typical metal roofs oh, that yeah. we do. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this was definitely, definitely more of a budget uh, compared to some of our other projects. But there's some things that we did on this job, Mundo, that I think really elevate it from a standard shingle job. Mm -hmm. uh, so first off, let's talk product. What's the shingle that we use on this job? It's an Atlas Pinnacle. They're a, one of their dimensional shingles. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing about it is it's an impact resistant shingle. So, so what you, does that mean, impact resistance? The, it, it's made with asphalts that are more resistant to hail damage, which yeah. is the big killer of roofs, yep. I mean, even in our area. And the, I think the probably the most important thing is you can get a discount on your homeowner's insurance policy. Oh, is that right? It. Yeah, I'm, okay. not, I'm not sure. I guess it depends by the carrier on sure. what that percentage is. Yeah. But it's something that more and more of them are asking for because with the insurance industry and the way they are, they're willing to pay fewer claims and this helps them, it helps you. This way you can get some hail on it and not have to worry about putting out to get a new roof Yeah, replacing it. that roof out yeah, just because exactly. you got a hailstorm. Yeah, because you're still at your deductible and anything else. So, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. It's a, what kind of warranty do they give on that? Do you well, know what, the look, um, what that on, looks like? On this one, and especially because you used all of the manufacturer's components, his underlayment, his starter shingle, his ridge, his ridge vent, mm -hmm. because of all this- All I, Atlas products. Yeah, they're gonna give you, I believe it's a 15 year non-prorated material and labor warranty. And tear off, I think too, Yeah, right? so that's included in it. Most of them, you know, the, the, you get to a certain point and you're not gonna get that. That's a big deal. So I think it's I think it's 15 year on it, yeah. And that's also transferable to the second owner the when second we look to that owner, warranty yeah. stuff. As long, so as, when the, as long as this is read, this is warranty is registered by this homeowner and yep. it's on record, then they can transfer, they go to sell the house. That's a really big deal. Yeah, it is. A couple of the details I wanna talk about from a durability standpoint that Mundo does without even thinking about it, that I don't know that everyone thinks about it. Let's talk about penetrations of the roof. First off, we've got uh, I think three penetrations. I've got two plumbing vents. Uh, by the way, I do want to give a kudos to my plumbers. They put them on the back side of the roof so you don't see it. There's nothing yeah. that you'd see at all in the front, but I got a three inch stack on the second story and it looks like maybe a two inch stack on the back of the garage. Right. 
Talk to me about the jacks that we use to protect those. Well, we used a, a lead pipe flashing, so it's an integral, it's a lead base with the basically the sleeve is soldered to the base. Mm -hmm. And they're long enough that when the flashing's installed, you carry it over and you fold it down into the pipe. Because that's going to be the, you know, as long as you know everything is done well when it's roofed and set on the shingles, yep. that's not an issue. But because that flashing's a little bigger than a pipe, you can get a certain amount of rainwater down in there. Sure. Well, these are folded over into it, and that eliminates that issue right there. And lead's not going to break down in the sun. No. Uh, you know, that lead, if you let it out in the yard for 100 years, it's still going to look the same. Yeah. So there's nothing to break down. And especially nowadays, everything code, all that needs to be painted anyway. It's getting yeah. painted. They want the PVC painted, but generally these flashings also get painted. So yeah. that's going to help it. Yeah, for sure. That's going to last a long time. Yeah. Those are quite a bit more expensive, though. So you need to specify those. Sure. Talk to your roofer ahead of time. You know, that's that's not your least cost option. It's got to be four or five, maybe ten times more expensive. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure what the other metal-based neoprene, you know, washer ones are. Yep. Generally, in the, in the day, I don't, the the plumber used to supply those, and so oh, they would they would bring out the me, the metal base with the neoprene. <laughs> right. You'd have to ask for lead, and then they'd say, "Well, you need to supply them because of the price difference." Sure. Yeah, they're a lot but, more expensive. Yeah, yes, sir. Now we do have one neoprene gasket, though. I've got a electrical masthead right. coming out on the back of the house. It's it's kind of coming from. We're mounted the uh, electrical meter on the back of the house. It goes straight up through the soffit. And that one, we couldn't have used lead, right? No, because it, well, if you had, you would have had a hose clamp or something. Mm. You'd have to get some kind of clamp action on it. Well, these, and these, the electrical guys supply these, which is always a plus, but they know to put it on that before they cap it to mm -hmm. get all their lines into it. And it's that metal base, so that's durable. And then the neoprene, where it fits tight to the, yeah. and since there's not gonna be really, well, there might be a little movement, but very little. That, that neoprene will hold out. Yeah, now do remember though, in 30 years, 25 years, 40 years, at some point that will leak. That neoprene is going to break at some point. Right. So there might be some, you might want to double check on a you know regular basis. You might need some caulking on there. You know, you could use yeah. some through the roof by Sashco on that to caulk that and double check it. But when it needs to be replaced someday, do you have to take the electrical down or what could we do to replace uh, that? Now they make a, a boot, they call it a zipper boot. And basically it's a it's a, a flashing that opens at the front and has clips on it. So it opens up and you wrap it around and clip it and it seals uh, tight. Okay, and so there is also, a replacement. Yeah, there is a replacement for it. Gotcha. And, and especially because you have a durable shingle roof, it, the, there isn't going to be as much maintenance involved, but you have trees around, so yeah. you may need to get up occasionally, get some leaves off of it, or make sure nothing's rubbing on it, and that's the time to look at your flashings right. and make sure everything is good, that that neoprene is still sound and that there's nothing happening with your other flashings. Yeah, you know, an annual roof inspection on a yes, roof that's sir. 10 years old is really smart. It's, uh, it's and you part mentioned of the maintenance. It's part know? of the maintenance. you got to get up there, and you got to blow those leaves off. If you got valleys that leaves are collecting, that's an absolute leak potential. Behind you got to get those off. Find those skylights, leaves will pile up. That's a great point. Let's talk skylights while we're yeah. at it. You know, we we uh, we bought the kit from Facro, um, but I think they didn't quite work, did they? No, <laughs> they were a little they're, taller. They're, they're a little short for what we like. Yeah. For what we normally like. I'm sure they. they I felt built my like curve a little too high for the kit. Well, no, the, the kit was made a little too small for your curve. There you go. All right. Yeah, no, your curve so, what do we do right. instead for curb flashing? We had a, a two by six curb. So, that's getting us five and a half inches up off of the roof, which we really like. It gets yep. you in the heavy rain, water's going to hit that flashing and want to roll up. But mm -hmm. we're, we're five and a half yeah. inches up, and our flashing is that high, and it expands to the sides, and the corners are soldered. Yeah. So, it's, it's, it's good and tight. I prefer those. So, that's a galvanized metal? It is. Okay, gotcha. So, and we use the galvanized metal. And if you look at that, too, it looks like you bent it on those two bottom corners yeah, that's, and soldered Yeah, that's made it, right? at the shop. Yeah, it's folded around and then soldered. The same with the top flashing. It's folded around and I soldered. I like that. And then, of course, you know, it needs a good coat of paint on it to, yeah. to maintain it, even if it is galvanized. Cause, that's right. You know, you get those leaves again that stays moist, that promotes rust. So let's get it painted. Let's keep it clean. Yeah, really smart. Let's talk schedule a little bit here, because I, th uh, I think a lot of builders, <coughs> especially younger builders, make the mistake of having the roofer come, install those shingles, put their sidewall flashings on, walk away, <coughs> and the trades haven't gone through the house. Uh, you know, the stucco guy is going to be working on the roof. The siding guys are working on the roof. What's the problem with doing that? Well, it, we'll start with the, 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 your cladding, your siding or your masonry or your stucco. 
you got the shingles on. First, I, I think it's just not fair to the other trades, especially here. Okay, I have this charcoal colored roof up here. <laughs> Get up here and work on this. Don't damage it and don't stain it. Right. Yeah, asking a little much there. Yeah. And then uh, and I've had guys, oh, I've got a good painter. I don't care how good he is. Especially, you know, you, your overhang even. You're getting all your, your cornice right. work painted. You're yep. going to want to spray it for, for, sure. for ease. And if you have the shingles on, they're getting damaged. That's right. Damaged or stained. Yep. So that's just not right. As far as penetrations, your plumbing, your skylight curbs, anything you're stabbing through the roof, you want to have that up first. Yeah. So they can all be, I mean, we can come back after the fact and put on a pipe flash, but now we're disturbing brand new work and you have nail holes, you're having to caulk those, put a nail in a new place. And yeah. so, <coughs> yeah, we just want to avoid that. Yeah. Mundo, speaking of flashings, uh, let's talk schedule of how we did the roof. Cause my guys taped the roof deck and then taped between the roof deck and the side walls right. uh, on this portion where I've got roof and then uh, second story above. Where did, talk to me about when you guys take over and what you did after that. Then generally we come and get our underlayment in there. Our underlayment will turn up the wall, even just a couple of inches before we put on our, our side wall or mm -hmm. head wall flashing. Those go on top of that underlayment. They turn up the side, up, up the sheathing, and then we tape those off. Yeah so that if any moisture gets behind your siding, stuck or whatever it is, it comes down, it hits that tape, and it's directed onto our flashing yep. and brought off of the roof. And then I made sure all my trades were done, and then I sided it, and then I painted, and then I got your current to do shingles. Right. So there should be really no walking on the roof at this point and forward. Just, to, you know, just to, for your painter to get up there and paint those flashings. Yeah, maybe some touch-up flashing, and yeah. that's, that's it. That's Other than it. that, the whole house has been painted ahead of time. Right, got your uh, penetration. Now, you mentioned it briefly, but we did a full <clears throat> peel and stick underlayment from Atlas on this job. Right. Uh, I don't have a ton of valley on this house. There's just a small amount of valley on the backside. Mm -hmm. What's the big benefit of doing the, that full peel and stick in your mind? Well, just for the whole roof, just you get any 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 water under there, it's carrying it off. Mm -hmm. Even with a good 30 pound felt, it'll seal around the fastener a certain extent. Yeah. But at some point, it, it's going to it's going to get through. The peel and stick is just everything, and especially in these cases nowadays, it's also an air barrier. Yeah, that's right. You got this vapor barrier up there, so no, it's it's that's good. a great detail, especially on a shallow pitch roof. You're yeah. going to want it. That's right. Uh, I think this is a 412 or is this a 512? I think it might be five. Yeah, I think it's a 512. I was telling these guys earlier in the episode, I like a five to seven. Yes, uh, much below a five, you're worried about not enough water and gravity moving off the roof. Much above seven, it gets scary to walk on. What do well, you think about that? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a cost issue the way I see it. The steeper the roof is, the more material you're gonna need to frame that roof. Mm -hmm. I'm sure your carpenter is going to charge you more for working yeah. something steep. Yeah. I'm charging you more. That's right. You charge a higher on, on, on based steep. on pitch. So yeah, if it was yeah. a six versus an eight versus a 10 or 12, exactly. you're going to charge more oh, yeah, for this. I'm paying my guys more to get up there because, you know, you're on a roof like this. You're standing there, you're tied off, you have your nail gun, anything, you can set it down and it's sitting there. The right. steeper you get, it's you sliding got, off. You're chasing. So you, you, you <laughs> yeah, you're more and more of your effort is spent staying on the roof yeah. than it is installing that's right so yeah, yeah you know you, it's just cost more i don't that's right it's not like we have to get the snow off of the roof and yeah well not a, maybe someday but maybe someday. We're, get, we're getting there but yeah. uh yeah so yeah i think that mid-range i agree i like that a lot let's talk about another really vulnerable area in the house that i've seen done wrong on a lot of remodels it's right above our heads right mm -hmm. here where this uh, roof dies into this side wall. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, I've got a window right there, which makes it twice as vulnerable. Oh, certainly. There's a piece of flashing sticking out that Mundo's crew put in there uh, that we commonly refer to as a kick out flashing. Talk to me about that flashing over there. Well, our, our, our standard side wall flashing, our turn back comes down to the edge and we need to get it out from behind your siding since yep. it's just a 90. So these kick out flashes, we take a piece and cut it and fold it and solder it so that it kicks out. It's what yeah. we see there. So it takes, we're, we're sure we're getting that water out from yeah. behind there. You know, in the day we would take it and we'd kind of bend it and get it out there to get it behind it. And that would work too. But these are, are more just, we're sure now. More robust. Yeah, we make them at the shop. They're all soldered or cut at just mm -hmm. the right angle. And then your framers cut around them. Uh, by the way, there's a manufacturer. We didn't use this on this job, but they sent me a couple samples. I really like these guys. I met them at the 
JLC live show a couple years ago. This is called the Jade Out Kickout Flash by American Flashings. You order them in a right hand or a left hand, it actually says on there, LH and RH. You get them in a bunch of different colors. They're made from a, a high grade PVC, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a nice big kick out. It's got a spot to drop your siding, whether it's vinyl or hardy or whatever behind there. This would be a great option too. Uh, and I like these because the builder could order these ahead of time and have it for the guys if you're worried about it. But of course, <laughs> Mundo made our flashings uh, for this job. He's got a great mm. metal shop and that makes a big difference. One, one thing keys. I wanna point out on this one too though, Mundo, because I've got that window right below there, I put a really big head flashing on that window. Right, we supplied those. That head flashing goes all the way back to the uh, sheathing. And, and uh, yeah, I forgot to mention it. His company made those for me. Sometimes I'll get them made uh, at a local sheet metal fabricator, but Mundo's guys, uh, made them, soldered them. They've got turn back wings on there. If you look on the right and left, so any water that comes in, that water's gonna wanna go forward and not roll off to the sides. That really makes a robust corner there oh, yeah. uh, and is really gonna protect both the window and the cedar trim that's around that window. We don't want water to sit on that cedar trim, which is gonna encourage it to rot in the future. So putting that head flashing on makes a big difference. Well, if that water sits on that trim, it's gonna, it's going to migrate and then it, with that given direction it's going to go where it wants yep and it's usually going to be inside that's right if we if we give it no choice but okay when you hit this spot you got to come out and that's what we want to do we want to direct it yeah for sure anything that i missed on the shingles on this job that you want to mention in terms of durability or uh if it was a different roof configuration you'd want to do this or that uh, not really. I mean, the basics are going to be the same. Yeah. They're, they're going to be the same. You, yeah. you, like you said, you had that small valley. <clears throat> One thing that we do and we, and we like to do in all our valleys is there's a roll valley flashing. It's only 20 inches wide, but we run it into on continuous. top of our underlayment, continuous, comes 50 foot roll, so it's continuous. And then we, we overlap our shingles over that. Really Some smart. people don't want to use it. They just go with the ice and water shield but we experienced this project up in um, Salado where they had that big hail. And it literally, I mean, the lay hail was like gigantic in this past storm. And it punched through two layers of shingles in the valley and through the ice and water shield underlayment. Oh my so gosh. It was leaking. If we'd had, if those people had chosen to use that valley metal and the ice and water, it would have hit that metal and stopped. They yeah. still would have had the holes in the shingles, but it wouldn't have got into the building. Right. And they ended up replacing them anyway for insurance. So it would have saved, we were out there patching numerous holes prior to it because it just punched clean through it yeah so yeah it's a it's that extra a, forgiveness makes a big difference exactly yeah. exactly really smart yeah uh big thanks to our friends at atlas for sponsoring today's video they make a terrific product by the way they're really highly rated on consumer reports uh, they actually do hail tests on things where they drop a steel ball onto shingles and they look at different manufacturers rated shingles and atlas is always top of the game so I really like these guys, they make a great product. And we use their insulation, separate division, same company on this wall right behind me. They got some terrific products and some really good people. So I'll put a link to those guys in the description, but definitely think about their impact rated shingles if you're in a hail zone like I am here. Uh, and there's actually one grade of shingle higher, believe it or not, than what we used as well. It is the uh, Storm Master Shake that actually goes up to a 20 year warranty. We did the 15. Again, we're really interested in uh, getting the best we could, but also being thoughtful about cost. So we did go one down from the very highest rated they have, uh, but I'm really happy the way it turned out, a beautiful house. Well, and I can just add, I think also the, the help, what you've done with the shingle roof is the ventilation. Yeah, Because for sure. that's the, the heat is the, is the enemy of, of shingle roofs in our part of the world. That's right. It's gonna, once that asphalt's gone, the waterproofing's gone. And so by keeping that ventilated and those shingles cool, that's going to prolong their life. So you got that and the impact resistance. And yeah, this roof should last a very long time. Yeah, we're going to last a long time. That's yeah. the vented over roof that you were mentioning. I've got an yeah. inch and a half airspace that yeah. from this soffit right here all the way up to the ridge, I've got the inch and a half gap. And the bottom side of that sheathing is exposed to uh, ambient air temp. And when the heat hits that, it's going to want to move air through there. 
uh, with the stack effect. So we should get some pretty good motion yeah, through that ridge yeah, mount. I believe so. Out through the top as well. I believe so. Man, you're a gem. Really appreciate it, Mundo. Thank you, Matt. Thank, Thank you for you. all of your amazing partnership over the last two decades. Well, it goes both uh, ways. I'm excited <laughs> to about the next 20 years that we get to work together <laughs> well, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, you count on that. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Atlas for sponsoring and of course our friends at Builders First Source. Uh, amazing companies, really thankful for their partnership on this job. If you are interested in building this house, by the way, the plans are available for this house at bldrplan.com. And if you're building in Austin, uh, Kid Roofing is a big company. They got a lot of crews and a lot of good people besides Mundo on, on staff uh, that could accommodate you. And you guys do both new construction and uh, replacement jobs too, right? Exactly, exactly. Asphalt shingles, metal, tile. They've done slate for me. Uh, we've done a little bit of everything have, with you guys have, over the years. We have a good size commercial division too. That's right, you got a huge commercial yeah, division. Yeah. We've done a lot of flat roofs together, so this oh, is a yeah. great company. Uh, and you're a gem, Mundo. So that being Thanks, said, man. guys, big thanks to uh, joining us here at the Reisinger Build. Stay tuned for our next episode, and we'll see you next time on the Reisinger Build. <laughs>